you, tell us about expected science cases with press that work on professor. Thank you, everyone. So thank you very much for this opportunity. So I'm really happy to be here today. So today I'm going to talk about expected science cases with bursts. So I'm Tetsuya Hashimoto from National Jonshi University. Uh, this picture was taken in Nanto in Taiwan, where we are building one of the outrigger stations of this project. So let me talk about this one. So this is an outline of my talk today. So I will give a brief introduction to first little bursts. And then I will discuss the advantage of this first project and then expected science cases using first. In the end, I will summarize my talk. Okay, so let me get started. So what is the first story of first? FRB. So FRB is a very short time uh, radio pulse which has millisecond time scale. So this is really short in time, but this is a big, really bright observationally. This picture is a schematic diagram showing the typical detection of FRBs. So most FRBs are coming from distant galaxies outside the Milky Way, which is called FRB host galaxy. In this case, okay, FRB happens in this host galaxy, and it comes from this distant galaxy all the way to the, our telescope in the Earth. Then we can detect this radio signal. And then, uh, actually, in this TPS meeting, we have lots of presentations about the first radio verse, including Kayan, next talk, and then Shotaro Chippin today. And then Yuri is going to give a talk in tomorrow. And then there are some posters by Tuin, John Chin, and Jasper. So please uh, come to these presentations if you really want to know more details about the first radio verse. And then, so far, so more than 500 FRBs are detected by CHIME, which is Canadian radio telescope that can detect many FRBs. However, problem is that we don't know the origin of first radio bursts. So now revealing the origin of first radio bursts is one of the most important missions in astronomy. So why we don't know the origin of FRBs? There are three major bottlenecks in previous radio observations. Uh, let me summarize one by one. One important thing is uh, previous FRB telescopes have typically uh, poor localization capability. The positional error is typically about 30 half minutes. You know, this is too large to identify either progenitors or host galaxies or FRBs. So therefore, this really hampered understanding the progenitor of FRBs. So we really need an accurate localization. So to achieve this, we really need to do the, this PLBI, interferometric observations in radio, to achieve down to one arc second level. If we can achieve one arc second level, then we can really directly identify progenitors of FRBs or host galaxies. So this is a very important point that we have to improve. The second point is, previous radio telescope had a very small field of view, which means uh, continuous observation time is really also short. For example, CHIME's case, CHIME is a powerful radio telescope to detect FRBs, but it still has small field of view, which is about 200 square degree, which corresponds to only, typically, only 20 minutes continuous exposure time per source per day. So this time window is really limited. Field of view also really limited. So that means if a FRB happens outside this field of view or outside time window, so they cannot detect FRBs. So there, there must be significant missing populations of FRBs here. So we really have to detect all of the FRBs in the nearby universe to understand the origin of FRBs. So to do so, so we really need an extremely large field of view, hopefully which provide us with very long continuous monitoring time too. If we can achieve 10,000 square degree, uh, it's nearly whole sky, we can achieve 7 to 24 continuous observations per day, per source. Okay? And then to do so, to achieve wide field of view, we don't really need this traditional single uh, dish like uh, radio telescope anymore. We don't need this one. We really need uh, this fancy design, which is the uh, antenna, the radio antenna. So this 
the antenna has a very wide field view on sky. Then we came up with this new radio telescope, which is the Vasling Universe uh, Radio Survey Telescope in Taiwan, the first. So first, so we are building this new telescope in Taiwan. Uh, first, we include 268 radio antennas. One of them uh, looks like this. Uh, actually, please uh, see the Taiyan's next talk for more details about this project. And then we can achieve wide field view using this uh, array. And then by combining outrigger stations, including Kugui, Nanto, Green Island, and hopefully Doncha, uh, we can conduct this BLBI interferometric observations to achieve very accurate localization. So this is the unique point of our first project. The first can overcome also third bottlenecks in the previous telescopes, which is mismatch between the multi-messenger observations and the FAB observations. So for some FAB scenarios, we really expect the association between GW and FRBs. However, the previous FRB telescopes are detecting distant FRBs, which is typically radiation 0.3 to 0.5. This is too distant to detect using GW instruments. There's not much overlap here in survey volumes. But uh, to overcome this problem, our first uh, will focus on nearby universe uh, to maximize the chance of detection of multi-wavelength counterpart of FRBs. So typically we expect uh, nearby universe means 10 times closer than previous economic telescopes, meaning that about 100 times easier to conduct follow-up observations for our economic samples using BURST. That is the advantage. And then this figure really summarizes the uniqueness of this BURST telescope, a field of view of radio telescopes in y axis as a function of effective area, size of the telescope. But please be careful, also, if we go left, this is better actually. And then Chime is the most currently most powerful economic survey telescope, which is located here. Compared to Chime, actually our birth has about two order of magnitude of better field of view. So that's outstanding. And then, uh, in terms of field of view, actually there are similar projects here, STAR 2 and GREX. They also have a very large field of view in my access. But their sensitivity is very poor compared to, with, uh, compared to uh, BURST. Actually, BURST has about three order of magnitude of better sensitivity than these projects. So their BURST is really outstanding in this parameter space. I would say even after SK2 starts science operation, we can keep our uniqueness because SK, uh, our field of view is still one more than one other month is larger than SK2. So that's an advantage. And then using this unique capabilities of first, uh, first projects, so we really expect significant science cases in FRB. Most important one is direct identification of projectors of FRBs. So far, there is only one case study. Uh, I think Jim will talk about this one later. Uh, there's only one uh, successful case of identifying projectors of FRBs. So there were very apparently bright FRBs, and then STAR2 and then CHIME detected this apparently bright FRBs. And then they tried to uh, localize uh, position of FRB down to this circle, and then FAST, which is a Chinese radio telescope, conducted follow-up observations. And then they found a galactic monitor inside this error circle. So this is a direct identification of this FRB project for this particular case. <clears throat> so they really used the three different telescopes to identify only one case, uh, which is uh, actually it's not really easy. They really need to combine three radio telescopes here. But in Taiwan, uh, we can do the same thing using only one instrument, which is BURST, because BURST has a wide field of view capability and also localization. Then we expect in Taiwan, this kind of study will be much, much easier than before. Then I expect BUST can increase the number of a direct identification project significantly in the near future. Next point is the complete census of nearby FRBs. So let me a little bit explain here. 
Uh, there are two different types of economies here. Uh, defeating economies, which means we have multiple economies from a single uh, source. And uh, non-repeaters has only single parts from single source. Then understanding this repetition nature of economies is really important because we naively speaking, we expect different origins for these two different populations. But there's a problem in observations. Observation is always limited. We have a limited time window. If we observe only in this time window, we get only single parts from repeating database. Then we misclassify this object as a non-repeater. So this is really the fundamental problem in this study. Therefore, due to this problem, we don't know the true number of fraction between repeaters and non-repeaters, or we also don't know the true repeating rates. So in order to overcome this problem, we really need a long monitoring observations uh, with high cadence. Then our brush can really do this because first has uh, 25 times larger uh, uh, of view and also 25 longer uh, exposure time compared with China. And uh, therefore, first can really answer this big question. The third point is uh, counterparts. So when I say counterparts, there are two things here. One is a multi-messenger counterparts. As I mentioned before, we expect the positive associations between GW and FRBs. So there's a one case study report discussing the possible association between one economy, which is cyan here, uh, happens inside the contour level of gravitational level, uh, gravitational uh, wave. And then this economy actually happened two hours later, about two hours later, after the detection of GW. So we, sh because first we focus on very nearby universe, we should be increased, should be able to increase uh, this kind of case studies significantly. Okay. And then I quickly go. And the second point is a multi wavelength counterpart. So one thing is host identification. Uh, so far we have only four, 40 FRB samples for host galaxies, but we can significantly increase the number of samples. And then by detecting host galaxies, uh, we can investigate the physical environments of projectors, which allow us to constrain the origin of FRBs. Also, burst counterparts, for example, optical to radio ratio of burst counterparts significantly depends on different scenarios of radiation mechanisms of FRBs. So then by detecting this multi wavelength counterpart, we can really constrain emission mechanism of FRBs. Let me summarize quickly. Uh, this is my personal future study. More than that, actually we can expect that economy can be used as a cosmological proof using the first samples. Uh, we can really investigate the key sciences in astronomy and astrophysics, including missing value problem, or how potential cosmic expansion, or dark matter. So please read to these posters and his paper for more details. Okay, so time is up, so let me summarize my talk. So FRB is really exciting, and then BOSS will provide us with unique FRB samples with its unique capabilities. So there's no such FRB instrument so far. Therefore, we expect BOSS will really lead to this revealing the origin of FRB in the near future. I stop here, thank you very much. Okay, now